Uh, so Franco, if you remember, he's talking about what he calls the no future generation. And he's referring to, to people who abuse drugs. And again, not just use drugs, but people who abuse them. And specifically people who abuse drugs because they're trying to escape some sort of an emotional condition, some sort of emotional state. When we see homeless people and we say, oh, they're just needed for drugs and alcohol, I shouldn't give them money. Well, what are a lot of us going to use our money for? Not drugs, oh, I'm sorry, what are, I'm sorry, what are some of our friends going to use all, all their money for, right? <laughs> you know, if not drugs and alcohol. The difference, though, that I was saying before is that a lot of times some homeless people just don't have a support structure. Some people are there because they make very poor decisions. Some people are there because they continue to make very poor decisions. Some people are there because shit just went bad. You know, things just went bad in life, and then, you know, they, and the same thing, they don't have a support structure. But a lot of times we judge those, those folks by the least worthy members of the group. Ah, oh, you know, they're just drug addicts. They have been their whole life, and so therefore they shouldn't get any help. You know, Hopper's getting at here is that you can name any group here. Like, for example, um, uh, judging a race. Think about any sort of a race, and think about the least worthy members. The people who do the absolute worst stuff from that group. You know, we see it all the time. Same with, you know, he mentions here a nation. Think about a country. Like, we think about people. Um, when you guys think about French people, what do you think about? They're cool. They're cool. <laughs> they smoke a lot. They what? They smoke a lot. Smoke a lot. <laughs> they smell terrible. They have a lot of body odor. That's why they have so many colognes, because they smell so bad. You know? Their food sucks. You always hear about French cuisine. Uh, French, French sauces are really good. French sauces are really good. But the reason the sauces are so good is because the food sucks. So you have to put a good sauce on it. Um, you've heard that French people are arrogant. They're annoying. All that stuff. Uh, yeah, there's a few, I imagine. You know, But I spent a lot of time in France. I've, I've never had an issue with anybody from France except at the airport. But other than that, they're, you know, they're you're good folks for the most part. You know? And I've been all over the world. I've been all over the world. I've talked to... I mean, I've been all over... Europe, I've been all over Asia, I mean, even Eastern Europe, my God, and all over the Americas. I've been all over the place, man. And um, people are people, you know? Except for Jordanian security, who kept me locked up for a couple days. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't my fault. <laughs> it never is my fault. <laughs> but I mean, I've been all over the Middle East. I spent a lot of time in Israel, I spent time in Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Lebanon. And by and large, what I find is that people just don't care about a lot of the drama stuff that you see on the news. People are just trying to live their lives. But we get hold of like the worst representatives of any group, we go, look, that's what they look like. And then that allows the rest of us to clutch our pearls and be, oh my goodness, that's what they all look like? Oh well, my goodness, then we have to defend ourselves against them. You know, we, we create this us versus them thing because, well, it's exciting. It's dramatic, you know? It helps us to understand the world in this really black and white, kind of binary way of good and evil, you know? Are there good people in the world? Yeah. Are there evil people in the world? Of course. You know, we go through the history books, who do we read more about, the good or the evil? The evil. Yeah, because evil is exciting. It's interesting. You know, like I've said, <clears throat> if, I, if I gave you guys a choice and said, listen, I've got two speakers I can have, I can have come in and talk to. I don't have time for both speakers. It's got to be one or the other. One friend of mine who actually came to Sweetwater started a small business, built the thing up, and is now doing exceptionally well. He employs uh, 75 people, doing really well. And I've got this other friend of mine who has spent the last 15 years in federal prison, uh, murdered a couple people. But he's out now, good behavior, and he wants to come and talk to you guys. So who do you want to hear from? Murder. The business leader or the murderer? Murder. The murderer. Yeah, it's more interesting. Yeah, it's more interesting. When you have, um, a couple of years ago, the years ago now, um, the National City PD wanted to come in and talk to classes about stuff. This is before all the, the writing and stuff. And, they were, and um, they were given an opportunity to ask questions. And what kind of questions do you suppose people asked? You know, have you ever abused anybody? Have you ever shot somebody? <laughs> you ever killed somebody? They didn't ask if, you know, anything positive. Why? Because that's not exciting. It's not interesting. You know? And it's part of our, of our, of our evolution. You know? Think about the experiences in your life. We have a tendency to remember the negative experiences, especially about people. And it makes sense to a certain degree because that's the kind of stuff that living outside of a safe society keeps you safe. If you can remember the net, like, uh, for example, you go to, um, um, 
Let's see. So, for example, if we're living way, way, way back, go back 10,000 years or so, um, which, will, which would you rather know about? There's a tiger outside, or would you rather know that there's a, a really pretty flower plant outside? Tiger. Probably with the tiger the thing. Yeah, you would not be here. Your ancestors would not be here if they gave that answer. <laughs> Because the tiger thing is to keep us alive. The negative stuff helps to keep us alive. Problem is, it also keeps us on edge, man. I mean, if there's anything the last year and a half, or almost two, shit, two years now, right, has taught us, it's that being constantly on edge decreases the quality of our lives. You know, it raises anxiety, it raises neuroses, you know, mental health issues, all kinds of problems, man. And, and the things that we're experiencing right now, we're not going to really see the, the, the manifestation of that stuff for you know, ten years or so, you know, when you guys get into your into your late twenties and you guys are actually be going into your early thirties, and we'll really start to see the effects of all the stuff that we're doing right now. Then the real question at that point is going to be: Did we do the right thing? You know, unfortunately, with regards to social policy, we just don't know for a while. It takes time for us to figure it out. And then by the time we've already figured it out, the next generation is coming up. You know, and so. It makes sense that we tend to focus on the negative aspects of certain groups because it helps us to feel better about ourselves. Now, hey, at least I'm not them. You know? Also, it, you know, from an evolutionary sense, it makes sense because it helps to, it's, it kind of t ties into our wiring and the fact that it keeps us feeling safe because now we know what to be on guard against, who to be on guard against. But Hopper, you know, you'll notice here, he's not making any kind of a a necessarily a value judgment, especially about the people making the judgments. He's just making an observation. We tend to judge people, any group, by the ones who are the least worthy to represent that group, by the outliers, the people who do the worst stuff. You know? I don't know if this will work, but I'll give you an example of this. Um, if I mention Germany, what do you guys think of? Nazis. Nazis. <laughs> exactly. And it's been almost a hundred years, and those guys cannot live it down. You know? <laughs> You know, it's like, it's like when I, earlier when I mentioned uh, France, if you think, if you go back to my generation, if you mentioned France to my generation, what would they say? She's eating surrender monkeys. Those guys cannot fight a war. Now, there's a lot of hatred towards France, but there was a reason for it. Going back into the 90s, there was a reason for it. In the early 2000s, there was a reason for it. I'm not saying there was a good reason, I'm saying there was a reason for it. You know? And again, they had this reputation for just being cowards and terrible fighters. I remember, interestingly enough, I had a one of my earlier... Um, uh, striking instructor was a French guy who was a European champion, tall dude named Benjamin, and the guy could the guy used to punch holes in walls, and he would, he would punch you know um, planks, not like boards of wood, but planks, until he broke them, and he'd get new ones. He's just a really strong dude. And you sit there and go, hmm, is he the outlier? Is he the exception, or is he the rule? You know, we judge people by these things. So. And there's a tendency to judge, and this is why it's important to get to know individuals and to not judge people as groups. Because once you do, inherently, we're judging by the least worthy members. Find the worst members, and then judge everybody by that one group. You know? Tendency to do this. Um, again, the value for not doing it? Less anxiety, man. As soon as you get to know people and talk to people, you find out that the world is not as scary as we oftentimes make it out to be. You know? Yeah, again, thinking back to what I was saying earlier about the neuroses that we're going to experience in the, in the coming decade, I feel really bad for a lot of us, man, because they're making us feel like the world is just a terrible, scary, awful place. It really, really is not. Once you get out and you talk to people and experience some things, especially you guys, man, you guys want, that's right, you guys want to have a few months left. Yeah, five months left. Then you go out into the real world, as opposed to what you're living in right now. Which is a uh, virtual reality? A school. Yeah, yeah a school. <laughs> you know? What do people tell you about the real world when they talk about it? How do they usually talk about it? It's hard. Hard. Mm -hmm. It's horrible. Shitty being an adult. Yeah, shitty being an adult. Why is it shitty to be an adult? More responsibility. Yeah, more responsibility. Why is responsibility such a bad thing? It's too much. Because you have to work. You have to work. You have to work hard. Right? Yeah. And that's the least, and, and all of what we're describing here is the least worthy aspect of what we talk about. Is it true that there's more responsibility? Yeah. So what would be an example of a responsibility that an adult has? Bills. What's that? Bills. Bills. Okay, perfect. Um, what bills do you have right now? Do you have a 
So well, some of you have some bills. I don't have one. What's that? I don't have one. You know bills? So where's your money go? It goes somewhere. <laughs> not, not drugs and alcohol. <laughs> Think about this. So, so when you're an adult, though, where does your money go? Bills. Ah, what bills, though? House. It goes to, yeah. So go to Red. your house or your apartment or your car or your. In other words, these are all things. Yeah, there's bills for these things, but now it's yours. You know, you don't. If 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 you are, I don't know. If you, if you have your apartment and you and you want McDonald's at ten thirty at night, what do you do? You yourself down to McDonald's. Or if you have a car, drive yourself down to McDonald's. You don't have to turn to somebody and ask a parent, can we get McDonald's? Can I have five, you know, can I have five dollars? I'm going to date myself. Can I, can I have twenty-five dollars to go get McDonald's? You know? You don't have to ask anymore. You can go do those things on your own. So yeah, there's responsibility. And if we look at it and go, oh, responsibility. No, oh, but there's such an upside to that as well. Everything is now your life. It's your decisions. It's Everything belongs to you. You get to make those decisions. And I get it. For some people, that's terrifying. That's scary. But there's also that, that is what freedom is, though. You know, the ability to take on responsibility, but to take on the responsibilities that you choose. If you don't want a car payment, what do you do? Don't get a car. Don't get a car. But I need one. Hey. The sooner we learn the distinction between need and, and, and want, the less debt you're going to find yourself in in life. Believe that. You know, do you need the new phone? No. You might want it, but understand that now you're trading your life for that phone. You're trading hours of your life for that thing, which is fine if you understand it that way. But, I mean, people bitch, you know, oh my God, there's so many bills. Well, they sit in their house with their multiple cars and their televisions and their cable and all of these things, man. And it's funny because people will complain about this and not be happy. And maybe that should tip us off to something. Maybe those aren't the things that make people happy. Maybe they are. Some people love having their stuff, and that's cool. But you're going to find that typically those are people who have a bunch of money, and they don't have those other worries, those other things. You know? And so this doesn't apply just to people. This also applies to situations. We tend to, to judge situations by the least worthy aspects of it. You know? Think about, like, even, God, even marriage. If I ask you to, to tell me what you think of when you hear of marriage, a lot of people think, oh my god, it's terrible, it's awful, love, which sucks, because what are our models for that? You know, our parents, our grandparents, and if they give off the impression that marriage sucks, <laughs> you know, uh, I'll leave that for you to unpack. But, you know, this applies to everything. You know, we tend to, to, to judge things, aspects, situations, people, by the least worthy memory, the least worthy aspects of them. You know, sometimes that's fair, sometimes it's not. Knowing the difference is wisdom. So, questions, comments, concerns, complaints, criticisms, critiques?